Coming up tonight, the war of words continues with grocers versus government officials. However, at this point, the government says it's expecting the grocers to follow the law. Let's hope there's no showdown. Plus, the police says stay vigilant this holiday season as the bad guys are out there. Stay alert. And Sarge, the big digital takeover. Our Jean Joseph spoke with the man. The details of that conversation straight ahead. News a Weekend Edition. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Megan Shepard. The government is not backing down when it comes to those new price-controlled items announced by the Prime Minister back in October. Minister of Economic Affairs Michael Halkidis set the record straight, explaining that the law is there and is to be followed. I saw the report in one of the dailies today um, where it quoted, uh, I think, two operators um, basically saying that they were not following um, the amendments and they were under the impression that um, something was in abeyance while there's some negotiations going on with the government. Let me just say categorically, there are no negotiations that will hold up the amendments. And so, for all intents and purposes, the amendments are in place and we expect them to be respected. The government added 38 items to its price control list as the country grapples with high inflation. After a recent report alleged some grocers were not abiding by the set margins, Halkidis told reporters outside the weekly cabinet meeting that inspectors were inside grocery stores making sure there was compliance. So far, the reports that we have been getting from our inspectors are by and large the new margins are being respected. But in light of uh, what we uh, saw being attributed to some operators today, I have and given instructions that the inspectors are to go out today to double check. A 31-year-old from Russelltown, 8 Mile Rock, was arraigned on seven counts of failing to charge his electronic monitoring device. Theodore Tainis pleaded guilty on the first two counts before Magistrate Simone Brown and was conditionally discharged. He was required to pay $1,000 to the 8 Mile Rock Police Station. Failure to pay would result in the defendant paying a $2,000 fine or six months imprisonment. Police on Grand Bahama are investigating a traffic fatality that claimed the life of a man overnight. According to Inspector Mick Sayers, police were called to the scene on Queens Highway shortly after 12 a.m. They met a male lying on the southern side of Queens Highway with visible injuries. Preliminary reports indicate that the driver of a silver Cadillac vehicle was traveling west along Queens Highway when he struck a male who was attempting to cross the street. EMS personnel were summoned, found no signs of life. The male victim had succumbed to his injuries on scene. Inspector Sayers says they are in the early stages of the investigation and cannot determine at this time if speed was a factor. He is offering this bit of advice to both the motoring public and pedestrians. We would want to continue to sensitize the motoring public to please drive with extreme caution and care and to please be aware of the speeding zones during the day and the night time. We continue to say to the drivers, uh, use your high beam when necessary and to always try to slow down. Persons who may walk the streets, we continue to say to wear bright clothes, fluorescent colors, so the motoring public has better visibility of you. Still to come on our News Weekend Edition, it's that time of year. Junkanoo is alive. We bring to you the history of the Junkanoo tricks straight ahead. And the police are saying be vigilant this holiday season. There are bad guys out there. That's coming up when our News Weekend Edition returns.
senators debating the Mental Health Bill 2022 earlier this week. The bill seeks to replace the Mental Health Act of 1969. According to a report published by the United Nations in June of this year, one billion people worldwide suffer from mental illness. Senator Randy Roll says he is in favor of this bill, calling it long overdue. When it comes to treating people with mental illness, he is advocating to change the name of the country's premier treatment center from Sandalin's Rehabilitation Center to the Wellness Rehabilitation Center. I was a product of conditioning, generational conditioning. It was not a place where one would believe that they could go for help. From childhood to now, we all agree that when the name Sandalins is mentioned, most of us automatically associate it with crazy people. And we say it just like that. Crazy people, mentally ill people, without remorse or, or empathy. The stigma is daunting. Senator Darren Henfield adding that more has to be done in response to mental illness by both the government and everyday citizens. He also weighed in on proposed changes to the Sandilands Rehabilitation Center. Sandilands was, I believe, revolved to, to that place where there's not only room for treatment, but where we, where we find a halfway house between Sandlands and the community, with maybe run by an NGO, if, 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 if none exists already, maybe run by an NGO with governmental support. The Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture continuing their Culture in the Park initiative, this time taking the action to the Nassau Village Park. Director Derica Delavo Grant says the aim is to highlight local vendors, entrepreneurs and entertainers right in their very own backyards. Going back to you know how things were back in the day, where the community knew who everybody was, so that was the whole gist uh, or the whole you know purpose behind it. So in that the communities would know who they who was in the community, who are the straw vendors, who are the seamstress, who are the cooks, who are the the, the entertainers, even the children. Because some you know nowadays we don't really know who who is who we live around. So that's the whole purpose of it, trying to bring back that community, that sense of community, so that each community can um, begin to build themselves up. And then, of course, by extension, the whole Bahamas will, will become a better place. The program began back in May, and they plan to touch various communities throughout the country. But New Providence has been Garden Hills, Nassau Village, and Port Charlotte. But we've also had it around the Family Island. So we've had it in um, Eleuthera, Long Island, and Andros. We actually have another one coming up in Fresh Creek, Andros on uh, next week, Saturday, next week, Friday, sorry, which is the 16th. So um, this is something that we are going to be doing in various communities around the Bahamas uh, to, like I said, bring together the community to support their own and know who, the, who it is, who is in their community. When we come back from the break, the police are saying be vigilant this holiday season. And if funny man Sarge sits down with our Jean Joseph, we have the hilarious details when the weekend edition returns.
Tuesdays is the key message from police this holiday season. While providing those tips, press liaison officer Chief Superintendent Chrislyn Skippings also addressed a recent matter where two men were driving to the airport and were allegedly robbed at gunpoint from people who were posing as police officers. It is alleged that a vehicle with blue and lights, with blue and white lights, uh, beckoned to them to to stop. And so, what I want to advise members of the public moving forward as we go into the holiday season, criminals are always going to be up to some trick or some new, going to be crafty, you know, in trying to take you out of a couple dollars. Uh, what I would like for you to do, um, let me just say this: police vehicles, emergency lights are red and blue, not blue and white or red and white. She says when Bahamians travel, they are usually on high alert. I would encourage Bahamians to do the same thing this holiday season while you're at home. When you go out, ensure that you're not on your phone, ensure that you're not distracted. As we continue our highlights on the greatest show on earth, Junk New, we're taking it back just a little. Just how did we go from leaves, shells, sponges, straw, and paper to the fancy feathers, jewels, glitter, and more? Tonight we get a history lesson on tricking out Junk New costumes. It, it created a different um, texture to the John Canoe costume, a different look, a shine, a glimmer with the lights on. Um, so that was really um, the start of where John Canoe is now. Obiama Knowles, son of the late great John Canoe leader and innovator Paul Knowles, reflects on the evolution of John Canoe thanks to the vision of his father. John Canoe back in the day was a lot of um, frilly fringe, um, big cut fringe, um, thick frilly fringes and stuff like that and the costumes were then just a blend of the different colors of paper um, but used in fringe. And then slowly over the years with um, his guidance and also a lot of other guys in John Canoe who were um, his teammates, his buddies, people in his circle, um, they started to, you know, trim down to a finer cut of um, the, the fringing and then going from there to streaking, um, just taking a cut of paper and just streaking to add a, a border, basically. And then from there, um, there was slowly the introduction of the beads, um, different color papers. Although an already colorful and beautiful form of cultural expression, Paul's vision helped to elevate the costumes when he introduced what is now known as a tricking out costumes. He introduced um, using a aluminum rods, um, whereas everything used to be, the frame used to be based out of wood and maybe PVC. Um, he introduced using aluminum rods for flexibility so you could then start to see movement in the costumes. Instead of it just being a flat costume, we started creating more 3D style costumes. This did come with some pushback, as some Bahamians believe the style was too similar to other cultures. You had a lot of um, older guys who um, you know, were culturally stuck in their ways and in, in the way they felt that the costume should be created. So of course there was a bit of pushback. But you, when you see innovation work, it's, it's hard to fight against it. Um, you know, my father actually had a, um, a German engineer um, design a cutting machine, the first cutting machine um, in the Bahamas to assist in cutting paper. Um, but then, you know, from that, um, other guys just figured out their own little techniques and ways around, um, you know, cutting the paper instead of using the shears. And as we now see today, tricking out a costume is not only accepted, but it has become the standard and expectation. Obiama says he believes that Junk New can continue to evolve while also respecting the Bahamian culture. I think there's a lot of evolution um, as long as we have creative people thinking constantly of ways to develop and make changes, but to keep it within the culture. Um, I think there's a lot of evolution. And 
when we return, the weather report is on the way. I think we can officially say it's boots with the first season. And the funniest man in the digital arena, it's Sarge. Our Gene Joseph has a sit down with the man himself. That's coming up when we return. very cool nights recently it's time for those fashionable boots and fur but before we jump to that let's check out the weather report right now seen the comedic skits featuring the popular online character Sarge floating around on social media. That's all the work of Zaneo Newbold. Now he wants you to take control in the digital world as his character roams the Bahamian streets in typical Sarge fashion. Join our Jean Joseph for more on that story. Zaneo Newbold's comedy skits, commonly featuring his alter ego Sarge, have brought him his fair share of social media fame and over 130,000 followers on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. For context, the Bahamas' population is just under 397,000 persons. Now, he's looking to translate that recognition into something more tangible. The entertainer recently shared something online that could potentially transform his legacy and change the game for the Bahamas. Newbold says he spent most of his time over the last five months working on a proof of concept of a massive open world game featuring the notorious Sarge character. It was a simple conversation with me and two friends and they were like, boy, why don't you make a Sarge game? And I'm like, huh? I'm like, I never really, it never really came to mind, you know? And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna look into it. So doing a few YouTube research and, and, and all of a sudden I said, you know what, let me just try, let me just see. And from July to now is what you see. Newbold is ready for players to live out their fantasies of roving the streets of Sarge, wreaking havoc on other characters as they travel through popular Bahamian spots to complete missions. There are people who, who, who I know to this day, um, seeing Sarge in the game, they would really appreciate that because then whatever they see me do or do in a video, then they could control that themselves when they're doing it in the game. But he says the end product is not as near as he would like since he's working alone and his funding is limited. The timeline is, is heavily depending on um, the funding as well. Um, um, how many people that I um, get together and um, and what it does, you know, because you know um, the timeline always really depends on how much money you got, how much money the project the project has, the budget, you know. So I can't really say, but I do know that a game with this caliber it needs at least three to four years of development. Newbold says the release is worth the wait since so much is at stake. If this is going to be the, the first game um, um, of this um, um, level that is going to represent the Bahamas internationally, then it has to be done right, you know what I mean? Not only to 
to to show the world what we're about to do, but to do my country justice. He hopes you will join him on the quest and also invites investors to come on board as he navigates the obstacles to complete this game. I would like the Bahamians to um, come on this journey with me and be, be a part of the process of making this a reality. But um, also, um, if there are like big companies or uh, just folks who, who sees the vision and, and want to invest, then, then I welcome it too as well. I welcome anything and anything's appreciated. Follow Sarge on social media for comedy and game development updates. And stay tuned to R News on Facebook and the rnews.bs website for more stories like this. For R News, Arch and Entertainment, I'm Gene Joseph. Absolutely amazing, Sarge. I think I might want to be a character in that video game myself. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us for our News Weekend Edition. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Megan Shepard. Continue to enjoy your weekend.